Okay, so I'm going to make this very quick and I'm going to make this very efficient because I plan on doing something a little bit later, so I'm not going to talk too long. The Dow finished today, Friday, um, March 12th, 2021 at 32,778 points. Um, it was above 0.64, so it looked like it had been going to 779, but at any event, it finished at 32,778. My YouTube account that I share with YouTube, which I originally started with $5,000, has grown to 21225 which is basically the high for this money. So I have personally demonstrated, and, I, and I, I, I have to say this, I did this account specifically because it allows me to use it as a teaching tool, um, specifically because it allows me to prove a point and the point that I was proving was the fact that investing in dividend paying stocks and stocks that actually make sense made way more sense than cryptocurrency. So yes, I started with $5,000 in this account. And now I'm at $21,225. Uh, when some of my shares had grown large enough, uh, specifically the marijuana shares that I had bought into uh, with this account, I sold them. Uh, specifically MJNA, and I had enough money left over in order to fund, I think it was Apple, and then I also took some of the money and I did something with it. I basically bought an assault rifle. And um, in addition to selling MJNA, I think I had sold all of my weed stocks. And the reason why I had sold uh, MJNA, hemp, and um, I think something else, I think it was ERBB, the reason why I had sold them is because they had risen so high that I wanted to capture those gains because as some people are quick to tell you if you don't sell the stock eventually you don't capture the gains that you're making. So the beautiful thing about my strategy because that's basically what it is it's a strategy is in my strategy to capture my gains I have decided that from now on I would be buying dividend paying stocks because by buying dividend paying stocks that's basically the same thing as you putting your money in the bank with the exception that uh, if you put your money in the bank, you're only getting less than 1% interest. But if you put your money in these uh, dividend-paying stocks, you're getting dividends, which typically outrank the interest. Like, for instance, Sunoco and the gas stocks, which I had been talking about for a very long time and trying to get people to buy gasoline stock. Um, all of the, Sunoco pays a 10% dividend. There's no bank that pays you a 10% interest rate. None. And every single year, you're getting that 10% dividend. Uh, and the oil companies are profitable. So unlike, what's interesting is now that I look back over my portfolio, some of companies have actually dropped their dividend. FCA, for example, was paying a dividend, but when they became Stellantis, the dividend uh, basically stopped. Now, will they give another dividend? Now, I mean, they're riding high. They're $18.53 with a high of 1950 from the time that Stellantis changed the stock ticker. Um, my guess is, chances are, there'll be a dividend eventually. As for Ford, Ford is doing great. Ford is, I bought Ford, as you can see, I bought Ford at $5.36. And I've doubled my money on Ford, uh, more than doubled my money, to $13.37. Ford right now is not paying a dividend, but, you know, eventually they could be. And just to be clear, this is not my primary account. My primary account, I've been holding Ford stock. I've been holding uh, what, what used to be Chrysler. I was holding GM. I was holding um, a couple of other companies. Um, in this portfolio, I have Neo and Candy. Right now, they're down, but they will be back up eventually because they're moving their cars. The point is, <clears throat> I had slowly been accumulating stocks in these positions. And in some of these cases, I had bought like a 1,000 shares of Ford. I bought a 1,000 shares of GM. I bought a 1,000 shares of uh, uh, Fiat Chrysler. And it wasn't even that much because Fiat Chrysler... Uh, Fiat Chrysler, for example, when I had bought it, it was a lot lower. So as you can see, when they changed the name to Stellantis, it went from right here. You can see I bought it at $7 and went to 18 My point is, using dividend-paying stocks, it's easier to double your money. And as you can see, $5,000, I have turned that into $21,225. So I haven't doubled my money. I quadrupled my money.
And that's just what it is. Now, I know some people are going to look and they go, oh, well, we want to see the rest. Well, there's Microsoft right there. I'm holding 10 shares of Microsoft. As you know, Microsoft is $230 a share. I bought it at $230, and right now the price is $235. So I've made a gain thus far at $57. I know Microsoft is going to keep going up. So I'm not even worried about Microsoft. But in the meantime, they pay a 0.94% dividend. So, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of money for my money. Now, um, there's a couple of losses on here, but those are all of them right there, so I don't even care. Um, I sold Hemp and I sold MCOA when they were at the high because Reddit, those idiots at Reddit had started fucking with the weed stocks and all of them started going up real fast. So what I did was I sold out of them and then I waited for them to crash the stock and then I bought back into it. So originally I had MCOA, MJNA, Hemp, and something else. I can't even, there were like a couple. I sold them all at the same time, got my profits, and then I reinvested. So right now, if you look right here, I'm down, what is it, 151, what, 300, what, 430, $500, $600. And if you count up all of this, I'm probably down right now less than $800 if you count up the losses in this portfolio. Okay, fine, a $800 temporary loss, but that's partially because Apple is, right now, they're down, but I'm, I'm not worried about Apple because Apple is going to come back just like it always does. So right now, Apple is down a couple of bucks, so I'm down $132 on Apple. Okay, fine, I'm down $800. Guess what? I am up, what, to $21,225, and that's just in this one portfolio. My other portfolio is banging. My other portfolio is the one where I had Tesla and then I sold it and I used $5,000 in order to um, finance this account because I like to diversify as much as I can. So um, what I did was I what I sold when I sell out, I buy back in as low as I can and then I let it ride back up because as you remember, I was telling you to buy Tesla stock before they did the uh, stock split and I also was telling you to buy Apple stock before they did the stock split. So... Um, Right now, I'm not even thinking about, the, like, it's $800 worth of losses, but I've quadrupled my money, so what do I care? You know, I'm not even thinking about it. It's like, it feels good to say, you know what, I'm not even worried about it. It's, you know, I'm just not even worried about it. Now, what I will say is what I am worried about is what's happening with the stock market. They are, as you can see, the uh, IRS under Joe Biden has sent out the this year's welfare checks, $1,400. Now, it's, it's amazing. Trump gave these people $1,200 to get through what? What? 10 months or 11 months. And now, what is this? March 12th. Now they're getting another round of stimulus checks. And that's not even counting what they were getting on unemployment. And now keep in mind, I don't get any of this welfare money because I make close to $200,000 a year you know, after tax, I don't get any of this money. So me personally, I wouldn't be, if it was up to me, you wouldn't be getting these welfare checks. I'd be handing out welfare cards and you'd be allowed to buy food. You'd be allowed to buy some basic clothing like socks and underwear. And you'd be allowed to buy milk and formula for your children and stuff. And you could buy clothes, but you'd only be allowed to buy them from Walmart. Like there's no way in hell I'd be handing out welfare checks for $1,400. There's no goddamn way in hell. I'd, I'd give you a welfare card that said EBT on it. It says Eat Better Tomorrow. That's your Eat Better Tomorrow card. There's no goddamn way that I'd be handing out $1,400 welfare. I'd be giving you just enough to stay alive. There's no way in hell I'd be handing out this kind of money. No way. But this is what the government's doing so what is that going to mean for the crypto market? Well, a lot of these people are determined to gamble away their last dime on cryptocurrency. Right now, bit, like, you know, it's funny. I have these trolls and they come in and they be like, yeah, why don't you make a video about Bitcoin? You're suddenly so quiet. You're not talking about Bitcoin anymore. You were making fun of it when it's 46,000, but you're not talking about it when it's 56,000. Yeah, well, guess what? Bitcoin still can't even manage to hit 60,000, and the reason why is because after Elon Musk made a fool of himself and put 1.5 billion into it and then watched himself lose 30 billion dollars, just watched it evaporate, 
over that short period of time because so many of the people short sold Tesla? Well, you can bet that not too many more institutions are going to be that anxious to pour their money into Bitcoin. Then there was also a, a run up in Ethereum. And then there was a run up in Litecoin. Litecoin is like a canary in the coal mine. When Litecoin starts rising, the other things have already risen. But when Litecoin starts falling, it looks like everything else is about to start falling. Bitcoin and Ethereum, you know, being the main ones. But there is no logic in this shit. And that's because the people who are putting their money in this nonsense, they're, they're reinvesting money that they're getting from a goddamn welfare check. They're not earning this money. This, there's no way that the crypto market would look the way it does if it wasn't for these people getting these stimulus checks. If it was up to me, you wouldn't be allowed to buy anything except food for the baby, uh, some milk, some, some pampers, and that's like it. There's no way in hell I would allow you to be able to spend money in a goddamn cryptocurrency market. No way. All of these numbers would be half of what they are if it was up to me. And that's because that you would you'd have to you'd have to risk your own money, not the taxpayers' money. I would never allow that. But you know what? As I said before, the government is doing this on purpose. The way we normally outsource inflation is we send our money over to China and they send us 80 inch televisions, 70 inch televisions, plastic forks, plastic knives, uh, glasses, dishes, body oil, uh, sex dolls. That's how we usually outsource our money. But now that nobody's really buying that much of that plastic crap anymore, what ends up happening is now we had to find out another way to outsource our money. So what did we do? Well, it's very simple. What we did was the government allowed you to uh, invest the taxpayer's money into some freaking Dogecoin. So I want you to take a look at Dogecoin. Since, you know, the trolls don't, you know, they, they want to troll me and everything. I don't even care, honestly, because they're, they're sitting back praying to God that their Bitcoin rises just high enough for them to be able to sell out. Look at this garbage. Look at this garbage. Bitcoin, Dogecoin, whatever. 0 0.0556. Dogecoin has been lower than 50 cents most of last week, and now it just managed to get right back up to the high, close to 60 cents. That's not even its high. Its high was actually above 60 cents. They can't even manage to get this garbage above 60 cents because it's a pump and dump Ponzi scheme. That's the reality of it. Look at this. This is the high. The high was 0 0.08. You know what was happening at 0 0.08? All the guys who who got sucked into Bitcoin, all of a sudden they're walking around with their shoulders high and they're popping bottles and they're screaming at me and they're like, oh, you didn't get your Dogecoin? You, I got Dogecoin. We're going to the moon. We're going to Mars. We're going to Pluto. They're up there screaming at me. They're like, oh, yeah, you and your stupid dividend stocks. When, the, when they were at 80... When they were this high, when they were at eight cents, they were up there screaming. They were feeling proud about themselves. They were walking around. They were walking around like like big men, proud and everything. Sure enough, it dropped down to fifty cents, and then all of a sudden, you don't hear nothing from them no more. So, as much as I hate to admit it, once they get their welfare checks and they invest their welfare checks into Dogecoin, trying to get rich. Yeah, it'll probably go up. Hell, Dogecoin might even hit a dollar. But if it does hit a dollar, just remember what I said. It's only because of their welfare checks that were given to them by the government. And that inflated the cryptocurrency market. And that's if they see a dollar. Because I'll tell you right now, some of the experts are saying that they don't think that that's going to happen. Because I was looking on the YouTube and they were talking about Dogecoin, and these idiots spell it wrong on purpose. But they're talking about Dogecoin, and they don't even think that Dogecoin's going to hit a dollar. It might, it might not. I was just looking at, uh, what was it, what was it? Can Dogecoin reach $10? Well, anything could happen in this market. I mean, you're dealing with people who are spending, other, they're spending welfare checks, for God's sakes. Anything could happen. I mean, hey, it's not their money. Yeah, so they were saying, why crypto experts? Now, these are not people like me who are naysayers. These are experts. They can see Dogecoin hitting a dollar despite Elon Musk and Mark Cuban backing. 
first of all, Dogecoin is like the most worthless crypto. For I mean, for God's sakes, they tell you up front it started as a joke. I don't know where I have to go from there to tell you that this is like the most worthless cryptocurrency that there is. But you know what's ironic about that statement? Dogecoin is actually a better version of Bitcoin. Bitcoin has a 21 million market cap. So that means that most of the people who are going to be buying Bitcoin are really not buying Bitcoins. They're buying Satoshis. The only people who bought Bitcoin were the people early on who were able to actually afford entire Bitcoins. They ain't nobody right now spending forty and fifty thousand dollars to buy no no. I'm sorry, fifty eight thousand dollars. There's nobody right now spending that kind of money to buy a damn Bitcoin. The whole idea of Bitcoin is for you to put your money in and hope that enough people get suckered in so that you can pull your money out and make some profit. That's a Ponzi scheme. I don't care what you say. It's a Ponzi scheme and it's a pump and dump at worst. But Dogecoin being more worthless it happens to be a better version of bitcoin because dogecoin ethereum all of these coins came after bitcoin so a lot of the downsides and a lot of the issues were actually worked out with the newer cryptocurrencies but you know what scares me and i don't even like talking about this stuff i don't like talking about this there are some people who want to invest in fine art there's some people who want to invest in gold and diamond jewelry. There's some people who want to invest in luxury cars like Bugattis and stuff. Not those garbage Conan segs. But anyway, there's some people who want to invest their money in real estate, which I'm one of those people. And there's some people who want to invest their money in dividend paying stocks like Warren Buffett and whatnot. There's many different ways to invest your money. But what really bothers me is it really feels as if people are being euchred into these cryptocurrencies. And the ironic thing is that at the end of the day, when your money evaporates and Bitcoin goes from 58 to 47 or, 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 or Dogecoin, Dodge, Dodge, Dodge coin, when that bullshit goes from uh, 50 cents to 30 cents, there's nobody to call. There's no FDIC to insure it, so there's nobody to call. There's nobody to sue. If my stock has a problem, like if somebody overstates earnings or something, I can always join a, a, a class action lawsuit. When you do this cryptocurrency nonsense, there's no, there's no insurance. There's nobody to sue. There's no insurance. And me personally, when I invest, I expect to have a receipt for everything, and I expect to be able to get my money back if shit goes south. But that's just what it is. So, yeah, guys, listen, if y'all want to keep taking a risk on this nonsense, just keep on understanding. I'm going to keep on posting my negative photo, negative meme comments every time it goes down and every time it goes down significantly because I consider 10,000 and 20,000 losses. I consider a 10,000, 15,000 dollar loss. I consider that pretty significant. So I'm just going to keep on saying exactly what I'm saying. They can keep on suckering you in and just understand something. If you put your money in uh, Bitcoin or Dogecoin, it, it, right now, the reason why people buy Dogecoin is because of what's called unit or index bias. They feel that because it's so cheap, it's easy for them to get a lot of them. Like, for instance, if I want to buy 10,000 Dogecoin right now, it would cost me $556 right now to buy 10,000 Dogecoin, right? Because it's, it's uh, five cents each. Now, you certainly couldn't buy that much bitcoin because you know that would cost you like millions upon millions of dollars if you wanted to buy ten thousand bitcoin that would cost you billions of dollars probably but it's called index bias there are people who are going after the cheap cryptocurrencies they don't even care what they are stellar lumens ripple whatever tron but they're going into them because they're so cheap now in order for Dogecoin to double whatever money you put into it, like if I bought $500 worth of Dogecoin, if I bought 10,000 Dogecoin, in order for me to double that money, Dogecoin would have to go to, what, 11 cents, basically. It would have to go from 0 0.05, it would have to go to 10, and then it would have to go to 11 in order for me to double my money. So it, Dogecoin would have to go to 11 cents. Now... The question is, is that risk worth it? Well, some people might say, yeah. Now, if Dogecoin were to go to a dollar, 
well, then at that point, I'd have to sell it because I'd be like, okay, well, I made a lot of money, so I got to sell it. But what a lot of people don't understand is the people who are trying to sucker you out into into Dogecoin are the people who bought Dogecoin when it was .0002 or some shit. So they bought it when it was less than a penny, and they're trying to suck your money into that rather than allowing you to go to something more uh, lucrative, which is definitely not a cryptocurrency. Now, when it comes to uh, Bitcoin, in order for Bitcoin to double your money, Bitcoin would have to go to $112,000. So understand this. Bitcoin would have to go to $112,000 for you to double whatever. If you put a dollar in today, that dollar would not turn into $2 until this shit goes to $112. Just think about that. But when it came to the stocks that I invested in, when you look at my, and not my day gains, when you look at my overall gains, when I could put a dollar ninety into a stock, SNM Energy, the, it's an oil stock, and the price went from a dollar ninety to eighteen ninety, saying that whatever I put in, I have, I've, I've more than quit. I've, 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 I've gone up what. A dollar ninety to eighteen ninety. So let's round it up. Let's say uh, eighteen dollars and two dollars. I've increased my money. What? Eighteen divided by two. Nine dollars. Nine times. You know, if then nine times. I bought in here a dollar forty eight, and it went up to fourteen. I've more than doubled what whatever I put in. Whatever I put in, I more than doubled it. More than doubled it. Whatever I put into Stellantis, I put in, whoa, whoa, what did I put in here? I put in 766 and I've doubled that money to 18. So my point is that I'm doing better with my returns, even though you're looking at the small number and you're like, oh, well, you only got $21,000 there. Yeah, that's only 21000 in this account. Aside from my other investments like real estate, I've got like two houses for God's sakes. But the point is, I've more than doubled and in some cases more than tripled and in some cases more than quadrupled my money. Meanwhile, you've got to wait until this goes to $112,000 to double your money. So the question I guess I'm going to end with is, does that make sense?